My name is Jonathan Flowers. I go by the name Inspiration. Mm -hmm. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Um, and so I had a life of crime and, you know, um, in and out the jails and, you know, I went to prison one time and, uh -huh. yeah. When yeah. you say life of crime, what do you mean the life of crime? Like they, people romanticize that in movies, like he lived yeah. a life of crime, you know, yeah. like what well, does that mean? Well, I got a history okay. of selling drugs and catching cases, um, soliciting and just that, you know, involved, you know, just surrounded around criminals and, you know, uh, you know, um, bad neighborhoods and being labeled, uh -huh. you know, by my tattoos uh, as yeah. a gang affiliated, um, in and out of Cook County Jail for uh, charges, you know, drug charges. So yeah. when I say a life of crime, I got a, a over uh, like 12 to 15 years of dealing and selling drugs. So let's go back to these two words that you use that I find interesting. One, surrounded by criminals and two, bad neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So let's start with Let's start with bad neighborhoods first. When you say a bad neighborhood, what do you mean by a bad neighborhood? Um, basically just, um, you know, uh, neighborhoods that's like uh, high in crime rates and mm -hmm. things like that, those are considered bad neighborhoods, uh -huh. you know, for those on the outside looking in. Yeah. Well, 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 furthermore, <clears throat> I guess, would so high in crime rate, would you also say there's a lot of money in those, yeah. those yeah. neighborhoods? Or would you say there's like, you know, like a... Are there like country clubs there? Are there you know, no, ski uh, resorts? Uh, basically, no, it's a lot of money being made legally and illegally. Okay. You know, uh, probably uh, more uh, illegally. And so um, when I say bad, it's because it's a lot of illegal things going on in those neighborhoods. Okay. You know, as far as drug selling, you know, prostitution. Okay. So let's go further then back to the criminalization, you know, drug selling cr criminalization. You personally say you, you sold drugs. Yeah. Did you sell drugs because you wanted people to get high, or did you sell it because you wanted to make money? Well, I sold it to make money. Okay. Yeah. And you needed to make money because... Well, I sold it to make money to... You didn't uh, have money, or what? what? Um, I didn't have enough money. Got it. And so I sold it to make money and to support my habit. I had picked up a habit of marijuana. Okay. And so um, in order for me to get marijuana, I have to have money. Yeah. Nobody giving you free bags of weed. No, no, no. You can't and so um, I have to make money. And so the quick and, quickest and fastest way to make money is to sell drugs, especially when you don't have a work history. Yeah. So you sell drugs to support your habit in a neighborhood that's been criminalized mm -hmm. because it doesn't have money. It's a poor neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the through line that we're seeing here is that poverty. Yeah. There's no money in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you personally don't, you didn't have enough money. Yeah. Um, and so you're selling drugs to make money. Yep. And so you, did you just buy marijuana with the money that you made or did you also buy food or what'd you do? Well, well, food wasn't, a, uh, you know, one of the main priorities to me selling drugs. Uh. Me selling drugs was to keep up with the fashion, mm -hmm. uh, to um, be able to, uh, you know, benefit and party with the girls, uh. um, keep my hair cut, you know, um, just, you know, um, just live a high life, mm -hmm. you know, because I wanted that. That's, you know, it, it pulled me in, it lured me in. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you come from nothing, you want something. Everybody wants something, you know, the American dream. Yeah. And so, yeah, you try to live that life the wrong way or you try to go about it the wrong way to get it. When you say come from nothing, you, you said you, you come from Chicago, Illinois. When you say nothing, what do you mean you come from nothing? Well, coming from a, a, a family of poverty yeah. and uh, not having much, you know, not having a, uh, you know, like, um, you know, uh, just not having what they want in life. You mm -hmm. know, so it's, you know, it's not equal. You see what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, uh, my mother didn't have a college degree. Yeah. Um, my father was in school at the time to get his college degree, but we, she, uh, neither one of them have obtained it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we was just barely making ends meet, um, eating crackers and meat and, you know, cheese and, you know, canned goods and, you know, things like that. And, you know, I'm wearing shoes with holes at the bottom and, you know, but so, you know, when I say nothing, you know, compared to the people who don't have to have that problem. Yeah. You know, so when you do the comparison, you know, you, you do the haves and have nots. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're making money and you're like, I want to buy some shoes without holes in them. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, the let desire me. Yeah, get fulfilled. Yeah. It's like this, this, this brings me joy. It brings me happy. Yeah. I don't have holes in my shoes. So when it rains, I don't have to worry about my socks getting wet. There you go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, so, so, I mean, when we talk about maybe food wasn't the priority, but also you say, you say fashion and like, you know, buying clothes. I mean, also like, some people sit, look at fashion, and they're like, "That's like a, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's more than necessary. You know, it's a want." But you're just trying to get shoes without no holes in them. Yeah. You know, like I mean, that's 
that's a different that that makes more sense when you tell me nothing yeah as, as opposed to something yeah uh so now you got something you're selling drugs you're making money got holes uh, got shoes with no holes in them um how do you feel then when you have that? How did that feel? Well, it felt like that, uh, you know, I can continue to do this because I like this, you know, and yeah. uh, nobody gave me anything. So yeah. I work hard for this. Yeah. And, you know. Well, um, you were working hard. You that, were selling. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like yeah, you I, awesome. I, I work hard for this and I didn't get caught. And so, you know, when you're doing something and you don't get caught, you kind of want to do it again. Oh, psychologically. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, cause, yeah. because your mind is conditioned to that, you know to the fact that this is what's working. Mm. You know, uh, nobody gave me anything. I had to create this on my own. I had to work hard yeah. and um, I got it. And I'm gonna make sure that I keep it. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't want my family, I don't want to go back to that old life. Would you say you wanted to protect it? Yeah. Okay, how did you protect that lifestyle? But I continue to do it and make sure I keep some money put up for a rainy day. Okay, so you had money. I mean, did you ever like get a gun to make sure you protect, you're protected as well? Or like, because like, if you have money in a situation yeah. where people like, are like, you know, maybe, younger Jonathans that are like, I got holes in my shoes. Yeah. I see he has like money. Yeah, I'm a robber. I'm a, yeah, did you ever protect yourself in that way? Well, to be honest, in the beginning of my, uh, my uh, criminal lifestyle, uh, my neighborhood wasn't, my neighborhood was built upon drug dealers. We wasn't the gang bangers, like, like the high gang bangers or the robbers. Yeah. So like different neighborhood has, has different things. And so like, yeah. we have had robbers that came out of our neighborhood, yeah. but you know, the main focus wasn't robbers in our neighborhood. So like, it was like a cultural thing when you're dealing with like neighborhoods and groups and sex. And so like, uh, where I'm from, I was from, um, you know, um, uh, Lexington and Londale, right off of Independence, you know, okay. in Chicago West Side. Yeah. And uh, our neighborhood was just basically around drug dealers. So, you know, I never had the thought of, I need to protect myself to get a gun. Okay. Because everything that I did, I did on a low key. Ah, and so, and so mine wasn't really like, you know, I wasn't like, I was, I wanted to be flashy, but I couldn't be flashy because yeah. I knew what that brought. Yeah. You know, it brought that attention that I didn't want to get. So I was kind of on a low key when I did, man, you well, know. The most deaf line, the harder you flash, the harder yeah. you get flashed on. Yeah. Like you get got. Um, so you, you, you remain low key. And what happened the first time you got caught? Um, I remember the first time I got caught, um, I was just a rookie in the game. Uh -huh. And uh, I got caught with a delivery. I served an undercover cop, and uh, and and it crushed me because they took me to this uh, one of the like the uh, how old were you? I was um, the first time I got caught was I was seventeen, getting ready to turn a week from turning eighteen. Okay. And uh, I got caught with a delivery, and um, they took me to like one of the headquarters of the detective units. I didn't go to the regular police station. I went to home and Fillmore. And uh, I was scared because when they pulled up to the garage, they had like AR-15s, you oh, know, AKs okay. and all that stuff. So I'm looking like, where am I at? This don't look normal. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it was it was terrifying. But, um, you know, of course, I got out, you know. How long? I got out within a week. I had bonded out for like $500. That was my first case ever. But when you went there, yeah, did it feel like, were you like, whoa, this what? is real? Like well, jail is a real place, like. Yeah, I didn't look at it like that. You know, okay. I was I was just, you know, like, man, I was so mad that I got caught. Ah. It, it wasn't even like, man, jail a real place. I knew it was real. Yeah. But it was just like I got caught. And so now I'm just mad at the fact I got caught and what I got caught with. And so then now it was just like, man, I got to get out of here. Yeah. That's what it was. Every criminal want to get out. Yeah, you know, yeah. well, yeah, so, nobody wants to stay. Yeah, we don't look at it like, man, jail is so real. Like, oh, yeah. my goodness. Uh, like, yeah, we, don't, we don't look at it like that. We look at it like, man, how I'm finna get out. We get to making phone calls. Yeah. We get to trying to strategize. So you get out in a week. Um, at this point, so, you, so you're 17. Now you're 18. Yeah. Uh, your mother or your father yeah. say anything? or what Of was... course. Of course. You know, uh, the pep talk. You know, the pep talk always come. You know, I told talk? you. Oh, I told yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I told you, you want to be grown, you want to be grown. And you know, and you know, at that time, you don't want to hear that because they did tell you. No, yeah, and yeah. And so it's like, oh my goodness. But uh, guess what, I still had more drugs. Okay. I had more drugs that I had stashed. Okay. And so now, as I got out, I lost my old drugs, which was a lot. And so I took a loss. And so the criminal mind state is, I gotta get back. Yeah, you gotta get back to zero. Yeah, I got to get back. So I got these drugs, and it's only like two, three days I, I enjoyed my freedom. And now I picked it back up, and I'm back, I'm back out trying to sell. Okay. So you go back out to sell? Yeah. 18 now? Yeah. How long does that last for until you get caught again? Uh, I believe I got caught at the age of 20. 
So probably like a year and a couple of months. Okay, so you had a run. Yeah. But I wasn't doing it continually every day though, continuously every day. Okay. It, it'd be like patches. So once I got rid of that first batch of drugs, I kind of just, the money disappeared, you know, drugs on weed and, you know, and then it, you know, got bored and then, you know, I started back selling on the corner mm-hmm. and then I kind of, you know, got to the point to where I'm running the block now. And so, you know, I'm in, I'm, I'm managing the block. You know, whoa, for a better, whoa, whoa. For, so you can understand what okay. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm the yeah. manager no, 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 of the no, no, block, no. Yeah. so everybody got to report to me, and yeah. I report to the, the, you know, the, the owner, the CEO. Yeah. And so um, it got to that level, and I ended up getting caught, and uh, it got so bad to where I was sleeping in the van, and you know, I was doing 24-hour shifts to where I don't go home. Whoa. I stay in the van all night. The customer come knock on the door of the van, and uh, you know, um, I'm doing this every day. And what happened was the neighbor ended up calling the police because a, a customer came early that morning around like six in the morning mm. and they wanted to get high. And so they didn't have enough. So I'm going through a back and forth, you know, uh, uh, you know, argument with the customer like, no, uh-uh, you already know better. Don't be coming short, you know, and it's too early in the morning. I'm not, no. Yeah. And so the neighbor heard it and she called the police on me and the police pulled up. And what happened was I was out of the van at that time. Yeah. But the custom, I mean, the neighbor gave the police my description. Mm. And so even though I was outside the van, they seen me on the, the corner and they got me and then they went to the van. They put me in the car first and then they went to the van and searched the van for my drugs. But were they, was it legal to search the van? See, this is the thing about the law. See, they write it up to make it legal. Okay. You see, so the police report, yeah. they written it up to where they said that I gave them suspicion. They found me in the van or found me by the van oh, and goodness. all that crazy stuff. So now yeah. it's my word against theirs. I don't have no money for a lawyer. I lose. I have to cop out. So now you go to prison. I, I go to jail and I go to boot camp. Okay. Instead of going down state, I, they, they offered me boot camp. And so I took boot camp. So I wouldn't have the number on my back, the prison number. Okay. And so I go to boot camp, get out of boot camp, and um, back to it. Well, so now what about boot camp? What what happened in boot camp? That, okay, that you, when you got out, you were like, all right, I'm. I'm no, so so boot camp. I hated boot camp. Okay, I hated boot camp. I went to boot camp in October, all the way until February. It's a four months. Wow. And so it's 120 days, and the program is for a year. So you do four months in in, in boot camp, and then eight months on uh, probation. Mm-hmm. But while in boot camp, they tortured us. You know, you know, in that winter time. So we outside exercising in the winter in the snow. Oh my goodness. We running miles in the snow, and you know. Yeah. And, and it was just crazy. We taking cold showers and, you know, and, you know, and they trying to get us to wake up so we can kind of, you know, do the right things for the right reasons. But, you know, after boot camp, I still didn't, it still didn't register. I went around the same people, places and things expecting it to change. It don't work like that. So your mindset was like, all right, I got out of boot camp. Yeah. I'm going to, um, things are going to change. I'm not smoking. I'm not, I'm not, nope. I don't want to sell no drugs. Okay. But what happened is when you don't get a job or you get denied a job, yep. it forces you to go back to get money because you gotta live. Well, how are you gonna get money? Exactly. You gotta sell drugs. Exactly, so when the job turned me, turned me down because of my background yeah. or a lack of work history, yeah. then guess what happened? I'm frustrated, aggravated, irritated, feelings hurt, yeah. and I'm gonna go sell me some drugs because the block is doing 10,000 a day. Wow. 10,000 a day. I don't have to be out here broke. Yeah. And so when everybody around me got money and I'm the only one, ain't, my pockets is flat, yeah. It, it take me back to when I had holes in my shoes. Wow. I, 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 don't, want, I don't want that feeling. No. And so. Because you I know what that feeling's like. Yeah, and it don't feel good. Yeah. It's that starving feeling. So it's doing 10K a day. Yeah. And you say, okay, I want to get in on this. Yeah. So you go back. And how long does that run last for? Uh, I go back. And uh, what happened was I stopped reporting to my probation officer. Uh. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Let me back up. So I get out. So I'm on eight months probation for boot camp. I complete boot camp, luckily. And so uh, right after boot camp, like two months after I complete the boot camp for the eight months, I catch another case. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with a friend of mine and um, he's, he have customers coming from out of town. And uh, the customer come up here and they stole the car from Indiana. They come up here with the keys. It's one of their friend's cars. They come up here oh, to make an exchange for the car for drugs. This is normal thing that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but... um, they come up here without the title. So we still take the car and trust it that they're going to go back and get the title because it's, we have a relationship with them. Yeah. They don't come back with the title. So I'm still driving the car around that same night. Oof. 
The police pulled me over that same night. Right. And, and uh, yeah, I get, I get, I don't get locked up for Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I get locked up for possession of a stolen vehicle. Just having possession of it because it was no break and entry. I had the key. The initial wasn't peeled. And so the police officer told me he was going to lock me up for a criminal trespassing, which is a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. But he told me that just so he can get me down to the station wow. and to cooperate. Now, after I go to the back, they put an F on my hand. And I'm like, what, what's going on? This is a felony. And Whoa. so he tell me, like, you've been charged with a, uh, uh, a possession of a stolen motor vehicle. And I said, wait a minute. No, go get the officer. The shift just changed. The officer went home. I got played. But that's what happened. That's the story that, that, don't, that don't never get told. So they put the F on your hand yeah. after the shift I get changes. the felony. Now, what's going through your mind at this point? Now, this is like one, two, three. I got set up. And how old are you at this point? 20, I'm, 22? I'm, I'm, I'm finna be 21, I believe. Okay, so you're 20, going on 21. Yeah. At this point, are you like... I'm 21, yep, at the time. What are you, what are you thinking at that point when they put the uh, F on your hand? Um, it just, it just, it just, it, it made me mad because I didn't get caught for selling drugs. I got caught for something I didn't do. I got charged for something I didn't do. It didn't make sense. I'm mad yeah. because I just got done serving drugs on my way back from making a transaction yeah. and I get caught for a possession of a stolen motor vehicle. So now I'm being, inc I'm, I'm, I'm being lied on. And so it made me feel like, um, I got to prove my innocence. Yeah. And so, uh, my parents came to my rescue. They got me a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, Cause my mom knew I don't steal. She didn't raise me like that. And so um, I'm fighting this case for 14 months wow. in Cook County Jail. I'm fighting this case. And um, I ended up going through a couple of different programs. Uh -huh. um, the substance abuse program, it was called Gateway. Okay. And um, you know, I learned some things and you know, some skills and you know, it just prepared me to make a positive transition back into the community. And so um, when I got out from the 14 months, I got out on probation because I got my GED while I was inside and things like that. So the judge, uh, he, he noticed the change that, you know, you know, that happened during my incarceration. And um, he had mercy on me and he gave me probation, which my case was not probationable. Hmm. And so he gave me probation and um, I was on probation. And uh, <clears throat> after that, I started, my life started to shift again. Mm. Because hanging around people, places, and things, I I, I never yeah, got yeah. out. Yeah. I never learned how to get out of the circle. Yeah. yeah. So I, in my mind, my mind had been renewed, right? Okay. And so I knew how to get out and not use, because going through substance abuse, going through gateway. Yeah. I knew how to get out and go find a job, right? Yeah. So I'm going to trying to find jobs. I'm still getting denied. You know, um, I got me a little resume with no work history, but I got a resume. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I got a lot of volunteer <laughs> information on there, there you go, there but you I go. ain't got no paid work history. That's something. And so um, they deny me. I'm not the man they looking for, you know, and uh, it hurt it. It hurt it. It really did. So in these denials, in these, in yeah. these getting turned down, yeah. that's, th that's got to affect your energy in it somewhere. Did. Yeah, okay, so yeah. now you're feeling down, Yeah. and then what? But, but Gateway taught me how to deal with denial. So, so now I'm trying to deal with it differently. And so I'm, I'm study going, I'm study going, I'm study going. And then um, I just end up just, you know, just living, just living without a job. You know, I'm staying at my mom's house and I'm just barely getting by, you know. Um, and I started to pick up my cell phone again because I used to hustle off my cell phone. Yeah. So I, I didn't have to stand on the block or nothing like that. I got customers, you know, yeah, just, on, on the phone. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I started back picking up my phone, calling the old customers and letting them know I'm back down. And... Uh, Surely enough, I start smoking weed again. Okay. And so now when I'm smoking weed, I can't report to my probation officer because I don't know when he's going to drop me. And so if he dropped me and I drop dirty, I'm thinking he's going to take me into custody that day. When you say drop me, you say like... What, Taking a drop, a drug test. Drug test, okay. Yeah. Just so, so people yeah, know. I understand, not everybody knows I understand. That, yeah, yeah. And so um, in fear out of he's going to drop me and if I drop dirty, he's going to take me into custody. I don't want to be locked up. So I don't report. So now I get a warrant out for my arrest. At least Ooh, that's what I think, right? Okay. And so I go on a run. I don't report the next month, the next month after that. And so I go up to Indiana and I started to, you know, doing my drug trafficking. Well, how did you see it? You just went to Indiana? Well, you the, case that I caught, the case that I caught, the possession of a stolen motor vehicle was dealing with customers that oh, was for okay, Indiana. Okay, got it, got it. So your friends and in so, Indiana. Yeah, and so I still had some type of contact from Indiana. And so I went up there and stayed with a customer. 
Got it. And, you know, he ended up hooking me back up with other friends and customers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to uh, make a killing, you know, make a fortune. Yeah. Off a little. And uh, that happened for about like six months. And then that's when it all went downhill. Got caught again. I got caught again. This time, you know, with more drugs, you know, some raw drugs. And yeah. um, I was facing 15 years, the most time I was ever facing. That was a minimum. Okay. That was a minimum. Okay. What was going through your mind when they said the word 15? Well, before they got to the 15, let me tell you how I got caught. Okay. Because I didn't get caught red-handed. And so the police officer, they had an in-car cam rolling as they was asking me questions. And so the question that they came and asked me was, who threw the drugs out the window? Clearly stating that they didn't know who, who threw the drugs. Exactly, because that's and what so, I'm asking. Yeah. Exactly, but this car camera is recording all this conversation. They asked me three different times. So I knew I just had the case beat. But when they wrote up the police report, they said I stated I threw the drugs out the window. But the, the car cam is my evidence to say that I didn't. They destroyed it. They destroyed it. What? They destroyed it. My lawyer requested for the in-car cam that they say was rolling. Okay. But they said they destroyed it and that they couldn't find it. And so, because they knew about what they wrote and what was, you know, recorded, yeah. it didn't add up. So they knew I would've got out. And so they destroyed it, you know. Wow. And so um, I end up, um, sat, I sat for five and a half months you know, going back and forth. And then my lawyer was able to um, give me um, my sentence. He, he, he had it broken down differently. So they was offering me 15 years to seven and a half. And so, uh, you know, he was able to get 15 years, um, five years on probation, 10 years, you know, in prison, which is due 50%, which is due five years. Yeah. So he had it broken down like that through the grace of God. So you did five? I did five years, including good time. I did three years in like four months. Okay. And while you were in there, like between Jonathan going in and Jonathan coming out, what changed in the middle? I was tired. I was tired. I, uh, I didn't want my life to be. One thing I did was looked at my uncle. My uncle was like 40 something at the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I looked up to him as he could have been a football player. Mm. And uh, I always asked myself like, why he did never go to the NFL? Yep. Because he always went out. Every time he got out, he did the same thing. And I always heard the statement of prison is a revolving door. But it's only yeah, a revolving yeah. door for those who don't change their thinking and don't change their environment and don't, you know, who, who not tired. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I had got to the end of my ropes and I started to call out on God. Uh -huh. And uh, when I called out to God, I started to read the Bible. And there was a, a scripture that I seen in there that I held on to deeply. And it says, whatever thing you ask for in prayer, believing, you will receive. And so I was like, okay, God, I'm going to get this a shot. You say, whatever <laughs> I ask for in prayer, believe yeah, 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 yeah. in Jesus name, I will receive it. Okay, I want to get out of prison. Uh, I want to get uh, my bond uplifted from Cook County. Yeah. And, you know, things like that. So, and he answered them. So when you opened up the Bible, did you start at the beginning? Or did you start at John? You started I, at Matthew? Where did you start at? I started, I believe that scripture was in Matthew or Luke. Because I just opened it up just to read without any guidance. Okay. And so I didn't know to read in the, the Genesis. I, I didn't know that that was the first, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Genesis is a little yeah, it's it, different. It's, yeah. I mean, you know. It the, didn't apply the, to my life. Right at that moment. You yeah, know, the, the wording is different. I, yeah. yeah, you start with John or Matt. I mean, it starts yeah. to read a little differently. Uh, so you, start, you started with, with, with one of those. Yeah. Things change. Did you ever go back since then? No. I've been out for two, ever since uh, March 2017, I've been free. Okay. And I think the key was I wasn't, um, I didn't ever try to um, tap into uh, my spirituality uh, because my identity is found in the spiritual realm. And so I didn't know who I was to even live up to the standard uh. of a man. Or even to know that you know it is life outside of uh, 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 outside of committing crimes. It is it is a better feeling than getting high, which is a natural high. I I I I didn't know that as a man growing up. I was mm. told that, but it didn't resonate. You know, until I started to tap into the spiritual realm, that's when it started to make sense. Does does the way that when you look at like the evolution of marijuana, CBD now, mm -hmm. and drugs yeah. now, or the way that we view illegal drugs versus legal drugs, yeah. do you start to think to yourself, man, I was just locked up for being a businessman. Mm -hmm. or, or, do you, or do you still like kind of lop shame on yourself mm -hmm. for what you did? Mm -hmm. Like what, what do you, how do you, when you reflect on that, mm -hmm. what do you look at it as now? Okay, so I'm grateful. I'm so grateful 
that I, I was able to go through the life that I went through mm -hmm. and was able to make it out. I'm so grateful because there's so many other people who is still trapped in that life. Yeah. So I look at the fact that God allowed me to uh, 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 have the knowledge and wisdom to get out, you know, and I'm so grateful for that. And so when I look back on that and, you know, it's like, you know, I'm thankful for them experiences. Uh, I don't regret none of it because it actually uh, allowed me to have a testimony to be able to go back and, you know, to witness, I mean, to, to speak to other people, you know, even the youth and to get on my experience because a lot of times people learn through their experience. So mm. if I can go back to speak to somebody to where they don't have to learn through their experience and they can learn through my experience, then, you know, I'm able to change, you know, uh, you know, the recidivism rate. And so yeah. that's what I do. And I use my experience as a tool, you know. Yeah. And when you talk about recidivism, I mean, that's that's interesting because I the, the second you said that, I immediately thought to what you said in the beginning. Yeah. I, I wanted to, like, have clothes. Yeah. I wanted to have, you know, mm -hmm. a lifestyle. I want to have a good time. Yeah. When you speak to youth or when you speak to people now, how do you break them out of mm -hmm. the mindset of, well, I'm not getting hired. Mm -hmm. I'm in a, a bad neighborhood, which is impoverished and neglected. Mm -hmm. And I'm surrounded by people that are trying to survive. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you break them out of that? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you tell them? Okay, so like for me, um, when I got out of prison, uh, I didn't know how to go about doing job searches and things like that. So I end up asking questions like, uh, hey, bro, um, is they hiring or, you know what I mean, where can I get a job? I start reaching out even more. Yeah. And so people start pointing me in the direction of the temp agencies. And uh, so now temp agencies deal with felons. They accept us. Some of them don't even do drops. They don't do background checks. So it makes it so much easier. Yeah. And, so, and so a lot of times, you know, just like the Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Uh. So what happened is, Nobody can, you know, even make a change if they don't even know where to start, yep. you know. And so it's like with me pointing them in that direction, like, bro, OK, you can't get a job because you think that you're a criminal, you're a felon, you've been labeled. Let me point you over here to where they accept people like you, you know, and use that as a stepping stool to be able to do what you need to do in life or even just to make it back. So I point them in direction like a temp service or even to Ujamaa. This yep. is a brotherhood. And so a lot of times people in the neighborhood, they, they didn't been abused, dealt with neglect. You know, uh, a lack of love and toxic households, relationships, they've been broken. And yeah. so um, they don't even know where to go to get fixed. Mm -hmm. And so they be trying to find a fix in an area where it's brokenness. Yeah. It's nothing but brokenness in this area. So you can't get fixed. And so they have to step outside of that area. And sometimes they don't even know where to go to. So, you know, a lot of times they just need, a, a, you know, a, a, somebody to point them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then they end up taking that step to see if it's real. And uh, I'm the example. So they have no excuse and it works. And so now you go, you go by inspiration. Yes. So what was the, because you took us through the, the, the transformation because when we go, when I think back to when you said you were 17, yeah. I mean, that's, you go into the, to the center with the AR-15s and whatnot yeah. and it's, it's, it's a serious deal. Mm -hmm. You get out and you're like, man, I'm just ticked off. I got caught back to selling. Yeah. You know, so what is the transformation from Jonathan at 17 to, Brother Inspiration now, yeah. like what, what did it, uh, more than spirituality, what, what, was, what did it take for you to get to this point? Mm -hmm. I didn't want prison to be a lifestyle for me because yeah. the three things that I liked and loved at that moment, I couldn't get in prison. Not like how the way I want to get it because you can get money in prison, you know? Yeah, no, you can, no, you yeah, can yeah. get females in prison, yeah, so you, I mean, know, so uh, you know? But so, so, so what it was for me was I really love and enjoy my freedom. I like going where I wanted to go, doing what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. Yeah. So when I found out that prison was the chains that stopped me from being free, mm. I didn't like that, being confined within the walls or a gate. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that looking on the, on the outside in, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confined and, you know, and uh, I'm being separated away from society yeah. because all I see is cornfields, all I see is grass, all I see is nothing. Yeah. You know, and so I'm like, I don't want this as a lifestyle. And then, you know, I like making money. Mm -hmm. I can't make money in prison. You know what I mean? Not like how I want to. Not like, no, yeah, I, nah, I, you I, can, but yeah, not how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I love women at that time. You know, I still do. But I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love them to, you know, having more than one. And I couldn't have that in prison. And so for me, it was like, how do people get accustomed to this? You know, and it's like, I'm not, this is not going to be, this is not the end of my life. Yeah. I don't want this for my life. Could you see a point in prison yeah. where mm -hmm. you were like, this could be it? Never. 
Yeah. Never. Did you see any people that were broken in prison that were like, I'm giving up? All of them. Wow. All of them. And, and people used to look at me like I was weird because all I used to do was sit on my box and read my Bible. Uh, because I was so in tune with what the Bible was saying, it made so much sense, and it was changing me from the inside out. Yeah. And you know, I was becoming this new person, and it felt like that I was backed up. It yeah. felt like God been waiting on me to pour this wisdom and knowledge up in me yeah. to go back and tell others, like, man, you can be a new creation. You know, yeah. you don't have to wear those labels that people label you as, and it is a way out. So we go from Jonathan at seventeen to Jonathan at twenty to. Jonathan getting out after three and a half or three in, in some... It was uh 20 and then it was, uh I think it was uh 14 months. So it was like at yeah. 22, 27. 23, 23. 23. Then I went back at 25. Yeah. Yeah. And so we travel, that, we, we, we follow that into to inspiration now. Yeah. Where do, where, do, where do you go next from here? Okay. Um, I continue to be that model uh -huh. um, to show people that, you know, the recidivism rate can be lowered, you know, um, with programs like Ujama. And other programs that's around that's like you, Jama. Um, you know, um, I continue to uh, just motivate the youth, speak to them. You know, so I'm like a motivational speaker, a youth advocate, a life coach. You know, mm -hmm. and so I, I continue to walk in this, you know, and live this out because this is who I am now. Mm -hmm. I'm not that person who caught those cases back then. You know, I'm a new person. I'm a new. Yeah. I'm new. My mind is new. You know, uh, I don't even think the same. I have a renewed mind. Yeah. You know, I've been restored to a right relationship with God, mm -hmm. you know. And so I'm not the same person. So you don't get the same results. You can't get the same reaction out of me that you used to. Those things that used to arouse my flesh and it caused me to go do dumb things. I don't react to those things no more mm -hmm. because every action. It, I mean, every 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 action doesn't cause for a certain reaction. I don't need to react a certain way all the time. Somebody act a certain way towards me, you know, and so I don't return evil for evil no more. Mm -hmm. You know, and things like that. I, that's that's me right now. And so I model that to show other people that they don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we think, you know, you curse me, I don't curse you out. Yeah. yeah you hit yeah. me, I'm going to hit you. Eye for an eye, you yeah. Know, yeah. And so, you know, that's that's because we condition. And so, you know, I just, man, it, it's difficult. But like they once said, they said that um, I may not be able to reach a million people, but I might be able to reach the one that's able to reach a million. Ah. And so, you know, I focus on that. You know, I, if I could just get one. I did my job. Yeah, yeah. You know. Okay. All right. Well, I look forward to 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 seeing the uh, the work you do down the road. Yeah. Man. Like honest to honest to God, I, I look forward to it. This is very inspirational. I mean, yeah. like no no pun intended. But yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna tell you another thing too before I end. Yeah, 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 so like ahead. so like in that lifestyle though, because I want I want to give you this. Yeah. So my target was the white customers. Mm -hmm. I used to get white customers on my cell phone mm -hmm. because I knew that they spent more than black people when it came to the drugs that I was dealing. By the way, the type of drugs I was dealing with was heroin. Mm -hmm. I only dealt heroin because people need this every morning. Mm -hmm. If they don't have this in the morning, they do the one themselves, they throw up, yeah, they yeah. can't even move. Yeah, yeah. So they have to come to me every morning. I have a job, yeah, you yeah. know? And so um, I remember getting robbed by customers, mm -hmm. you know, not with a gun, just beat up, wow. you know, by customers, you know, and fighting for my life at wow. a point in time. It didn't stop me though, I kept doing it. You know, and uh, I remember robbing people when I got so low. You know, because money will make you do some things that you, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, customers will call me trying to buy drugs, and now I get some fake drugs, some prescription pills, and put it in an aluminum foil yeah. to sell it to them just because I need the money. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, that lifestyle, man, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's a trap. Does it feel like a different life ago, almost? Like, uh, you look nah. back at it, and you're like. Yeah. Now, nah, I feel like I, I, you know, it feel like it was yesterday. Really? It felt wow. like it was yesterday because I'm still so fresh. I only been out like two and a half years, right? Yeah. And so I still got the experience. Okay. I still got the, the the mindset of a criminal. That's why I, I'm. I'm I, that's why I'm able to relate to them so much. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I could I could think like how they think, and then you know I'm versatile, and then I could bring them to the, the you know the current. So for you, so to 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 wrap on this, you talk about helping other people. How do you help yourself mm -hmm. in 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 the realms of like? Maybe some things you've internalized from prison. Maybe some things you've internalized from selling drugs. How do you rewire that, if at all? Like, um, as far as like, like, can you rewire that? Like, because I really want to answer it. How you? Well, I mean, you can answer it however you like. I'm not really searching for like a, a specific answer. Okay. I'm saying from the things that you learn in in the game and the things that you learned in prison. 
how do you de-internalize that? Like, I spoke to, you know, one brother before we came in, he said, woke up in the morning, mm -hmm. said, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, like certain things in prison that you just like get hardwired to learn. Mm -hmm. Certain things in, in, in selling drugs that you get hardwired to like, mm -hmm. to like learn. How do you take that, that culture out of you, mm -hmm. if at all? Okay. Or do you keep it with you so you can still relate to people that have done it? Well, the thing about it is that culture would never be forgotten. Yeah. The thing about it is I don't have to live it. Mm. See, it's a difference between remembering it and living it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing about it is I need to remember it because that's how I use that as a tool to work on the minds of the ones who still live in it. Mm -hmm. You see? And so um, um, that's my testimony. Yeah. So I don't need to forget where I came from. Mm -hmm. I need to remember where I came from so I won't go back. Yeah. You know, I, I need to remember them days I was out on the block and I didn't wash up for two, three days. Wow. I need to remember those days that when I was running from the police, that was the greatest fear I used to feel in my heart. Wow. I need to remember that wow. because I, I don't need to live like that no more. I'm yeah. free. Yeah. Like when the police get behind me now, it's no fear okay. because I'm living right. Yeah. And so like it's all about me not living it. So one thing I do is I stay rooted in the word of God Okay. because, you know, that, 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 that's my core. You know, um, love and, you know, um, mm -hmm. treat people how I want to be treated mm -hmm. and loving everybody. And, you know, what I mean, like I back at back back then, I didn't even know I was selling poison. I knew I was selling drugs, but I didn't know I was selling poison. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to poison people. Yeah. You see, people die off this stuff that I was selling. Yep. I don't want to poison people. You know, what I mean, I revived people okay. that I sold drugs to. Mm -hmm. They turned blue in the face was about to overdose. Wow. I threw them in the tub with cold water to shock them so that they wouldn't die. You know, and so I have that as a memory. Yeah. I don't want to live like that no more. Uh -huh. I got out of prison one time. I got out of jail one time out of Cook County, and I tried to call one of my old customers, and guess what? I couldn't get, a con I couldn't get in contact with her, so I called her friend. Guess what her friend told me? She died off heroin. Oof. Do, do you know I played a part in her life? How'd that make you feel? It made me feel regretful at that time. Yeah. Like, dang, I can't believe Trina did. Yeah. But it didn't change the way that it didn't stop me from selling. Yep. And so one thing that I do, I stay, I stay, I keep my relationship with God first, mm -hmm. because the thing about it is with criminals, they, they so busy trying to dodge the law of the land. They have no conscience of God. You see, so the more conscious I am of God, the more obedient I could be to the law of the land. You see, because it's him first, you know? So when I think I'm slick, I have to look up and remind myself, like, I know you see me, God. I can't get away with this. <laughs> I, I, so, 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 you know, I'm being held accountable to a higher standard than just the law of the land. And so that's what make me not, you know, like that's where I'm at. I've been transformed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Well, like I said, I, I, I really do look forward to like the next steps that you take, you know, like like in, in, in your path because your story is, is amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's something profound. Appreciate but it. thank you for the time, brother. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Man. Yeah. yeah.